Hello and welcome to another Fully Charged Plus micro rant. Now, okay, if there's one thing I've had long experience of, it's wearing a very complicated and hot costume and walking around in a mechanical manner to portray a service mechanoid with highly advanced artificial intelligence and sensitive emotional awareness software. Yes, I've done that. So when Elon Musk introduced the Tesla bot at a recent event, I have to say the poor sap in the slightly rubbish robot suit had my full sympathy. There's no dignity in doing that. Hey man, I was the dude in the Tesla bot suit is not going to be something anyone wants to boast about. So here's my take on this news grabbing piffle, sorry, vitally important story. Tesla are literally streets ahead. In fact, they are Google Earth's ahead when it comes to artificial in intelligence in their cars. Their autopilot with FSD full self-driving is clearly very, very impressive. All the videos I've seen of how the latest cars deal with incredibly complex road situations is unbelievable. Most of the time. No, seriously, for a huge amount of the time, they have it. They have really, really nailed it. Yes, there have been some worrying accidents with Tesla cars using autopilot over the last few years. And there is an investigation underway right now by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the USA, which could be difficult for Tesla in the coming couple of years. So you could maybe argue that introducing a biped robot that's coming soon would grab more headlines and take media attention away from any possible negative story about the company. You could argue that, but I do think you'd be wrong. I don't want to go into that now. Clearly, any technology like this is pushing the limits. And what Tesla are learning now with many hundreds of thousands of cars safely covering billions of miles of very close to fully autonomous driving would have been impossible to even imagine just a few years ago. Now, I've had the privilege of riding in two so-called fully autonomous cars, one put together by Bosch about eight years ago, which was really impressive, and one by Nissan, which was truly brain-scrambling. The Nissan Leaf I went in, there's an episode on Fully Charged about it, drove on freeways, busy urban roads, narrow side streets, negotiated roundabouts, traffic lights, pedestrian crosses, pushy London drivers. It managed to move safely for many, many miles with dogs, cyclists, pedestrians and all manner of obstructions and potential hazards and never once did the driver have to intervene. But that task required the entire boot or trunk of the Nissan Leaf to be full of big, heavy, energy-sapping desktop computers. Now, Tesla are now doing the equivalent of that with new chip architecture and amazing artificial intelligence. They are revealing themselves to be more and more a software company. And this is the argument they are making regarding biped robots. The rather poorly named Tesla bot will, if it ever sees the light of day, use the same artificial intelligence that's being developed and constantly refined and improved in hundreds of thousands of cars. And so the question I think we might fairly ask is, a humanoid autonomous machine, a biped, is that really a good idea? Two-legged erect machines have to balance in a really awkward way and you use a huge amount of computing power, energy and technology in order to stay upright. Really, I mean, is that sensible? I mean, we've all seen the amazing technology coming out of Boston Dynamics. The quadruped robots that can open doors, climb stairs, jump over things, probably bring you a cup of tea upstairs in your house over rough terrain and not spill any, or alternatively carry weapons or bombs. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you can't help thinking that when you see they are terrifyingly capable. But basically, if you have four legs and the machine turns off, runs flat or closes down, it will stay on all fours. A biped machine needs to use energy and computing power all the time just to stay upright. If you think I'm talking nonsense, stand up straight and fall to sleep and see what happens. As your conscious mind closes down and all the balance and all the muscles that are going on to keep you upright relax and turn off, you're in trouble. If you're going to do that, do it surrounded by mattresses. And you're, you're, and you're going through all the pain of developing technology just to stand upright so the damn thing looks a bit like a human being. Why? What, may I ask, is the engineering advantage of doing this? I'll tell you. It's very simple. There isn't one. The only advantage is to gain some cheap publicity by making some poor sap wear a f robot suit.
I will be the first to cheer if Tesla do create an autonomous biped machine with decent range and a variety of safety features, but I still think they'd be better off developing something with more legs. And while I'm on the subject of fully autonomous vehicles, I'm not that interested. What I mean is, I don't want to travel around in a fully autonomous car. What's the point? A bus or truck, maybe. Last mile delivery systems might make sense. But the legal and insurance hassles of having a human being in an autonomous car and vulnerable people outside has always left me anxious. When I've heard suggestions from engineers that a fully autonomous car with no one in it is hugely simpler to deal with from an insurance standpoint and an ethics standpoint and a safety standpoint if and when faced with catastrophic failure. And if there's one thing the human race should have learned by now, catastrophic failure always happens. We just need to minimize it. Anyway, what is the point, you may ask, of having a fully autonomous car with no one in it? Picture this. You don't own a car. For 70% of your transport needs, you walk, you use a bike, you use public transport. But every now and then, a car is really, really useful. But you don't own a car. You haven't made the massive investment to own a car, which you leave idle for 90% of the time you own it. Instead, you subscribe to a service that gives you access to a car. You need to go shopping and you need to buy more than is comfortable or safe to carry by bike or walking or whatever. Wait for it. You live 10 miles from a shop, which is like me. So you order a car. It arrives very swiftly. There's no one in it. It's fully autonomous. The company that owns the car insures it and are responsible for anything that happens while it's empty and on its way to you. It's also fully charged and valeted. You get in and you drive the car. You are now insured and responsible for the vehicle. You drive the car yourself to the shop. When you get there, you get out, the car drives away to be used by someone else. You do your shopping, order another car, you drive home, unload your shopping and off the car goes. That is the sort of robot car that could really, really change things. Not a wretched biped robot that can carry a sandwich for you. So that's why I'm not that interested in the Tesla bot, even though I love robots. And now I must complete my cleaning duties. So until next time, take care and remember, always try harder to love the people you find it difficult to spend time with. <laughs>